The Colorado River carved its way 1,450 miles from the Rockies to the Gulf of California for millions of years, but now it no longer even reaches the sea. This iconic American symbol of endless resources can help us visualize the dire circumstances of water in the United States. However, this symbol of drought in America only shows the surface of a much deeper and more severe problem. Underneath the Colorado River's surface lies America's water problem. Now, while almost everyone learned about the water cycle in fourth grade science class, it has gotten a little fuzzy, so we're going to do a brief refresher course to better understand the severity of this issue. Most everyone likely remembers the basic steps like evaporation, condensation, transportation, and precipitation. However, the hiccups start around here with the runoff, infiltration, and groundwater flow. Most of the visible water, like rivers, lakes, and streams, mostly comes from snow runoff from any number of various mountain ranges in the United States. Now, while we see these as infinite snowpacks, the reality is it's very common for them to almost completely disappear by summertime. This behavior is normal for a healthy ecosystem, otherwise snowpacks turn into glaciers, and that's how ice ages start. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, then what's the problem, mystery video man? And that's a great question. To demonstrate this problem, let's turn up the temperature, literally. The current impact of climate change has been slowly and noticeably intensifying the temperature during the winter and summer months. In simple terms, this causes snowpack to start accumulating earlier and melting earlier. Now, if there's less snowpack later in the summer months, it's easy to understand how these lakes and rivers can start to become depleted. The decrease in water supply from the mountains along with warmer temperatures that evaporate the surface water help to rapidly decrease water levels all across the United States. Couple this issue with a decrease in overall precipitation, and you can now visualize how Lake Mead has lost an alarming amount of water in such a short period of a decade. This explains the visual problems with the lakes, but what about the main issue promised at the beginning of this video? Let's go back to that diagram and I'll talk about infiltration and groundwater. Groundwater is replenished much slower than surface water. It takes on average three years, but in some cases it can take up to 15 years to fully replenish an aqueduct if it ever recovers at all. These aqueducts replenish by allowing surface water to flow down into the aqueduct system over the course of many, many years. In this map from the USGS, it shows the rapid depletion that is happening in America's aquifers, mainly those of the American Southwest. Groundwater is also a crucial part of most American supply that is surprisingly unrealized. Even I was unaware of this specific issue until I was researching this topic. According to the University of California Riverside, 85% of Californians rely on groundwater for a portion of their water supply. However, because of drought, overuse, mismanagement, these critical supplies of water have started to get dangerously low levels of capacity. If we do not limit the usage of underground aquifers, we will be forced to rely on the already visibly depleted water on the surface. Now, I don't like to be one for straight up fear mongering, so let me tell you what is and could be done to help solve this. We have some great examples of cities that manage their water incredibly efficiently, like Las Vegas. Las Vegas is able to accomplish this by removing unnecessary lawns, recycling water at impressive efficiencies, and capping overall usage of residents to avoid abuse by a few select individuals. On top of cutting usage, states like California have created 11 desalinization plants or factories that turn salt water into fresh water. These are very expensive and time consuming, but are one of the necessary steps that have to be taken to increase the supply before curbing the demand. This problem is a very serious issue due to how many factors of life rely on the abundance of fresh water in America. If we continue to use the supply of our resources as if they are infinite and without consequence, we could be forced into some harsh reactions instead of taking a few very reasonable precautions. While it might be inconvenient and difficult to implement these measures, they are necessary to avoid the consequences of America's water problem.